Hey folks, Mac and McGee here. In today's video, I'm going to do what I promised yesterday. We're going to make the purple sausage. And of course, poke berries are going to be the star of the show, but I've got purple onion as well. I'm going to go ahead and dice that up real quick. Mary grew the purple onions. We're just going to make a rough dice because we're going to send it right on through the grinder with the meat. All right, we've got our onion cubed and set to the side. Our poke berries we rinsed. We washed them in a bowl and then I went ahead and picked them off and picked them individually. That way I didn't get any green ones. Didn't get any spiders. And I've got them boiled. They've been on the stove. The fire was just burning night right away. And now we've got them set to the side cooling. For our meat, we are going to use beef. Because beef is what's for dinner. We butchered this beef here about uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. We didn't make a video of it. It was a beef that had a problem. A friend of mine had a, a cow, a beef cow, got a wire wrapped around her leg and needed a butcher. So we butchered it for him and we was able to get some ground beef. So that's gonna be our base for this sausage. As you know, I love grinding my sausage meat frozen anyway. So we're in great shape because it's frozen. If you're ever in a situation where you're making sausage with meat that's already been ground, I highly recommend doing this. Don't thaw it out completely. Don't thaw it out at all if you can. You may have to poke it through like this and then just work it down. This meat has a pretty good fat ratio, so it's not terribly hard. You can cut fat meat that's frozen quite easily. When I say quite easily, I don't mean easy as falling off a log. You have to work a little bit for it, but look at me. I'm not working hard. Just poke it in, and it kind of shatters it a little bit, and there you go. So I'm going to cut all this up. I'm going to have my fat ready, and then we'll talk about seasonings. impressed with the Victor Knox six inch boning knife just drop down in the descriptions and I've got them there for you I've had countless people ask me McGee I don't even know how to find the descriptions I keep looking well look at them little words down there underneath this video and you'll see where it says more tap on more and you'll get more all right I'm gonna go ahead and dice up this fat even though it's completely frozen it cuts so easy that way I can get it dispersed more evenly across this beef. Now this is mangalitsa pork fat. It's a very creamy, very high quality fat. And it's actually a fat that's good for you. It's not so bad. It's not like pigs that was raised commercially in an atmosphere where they had no sunlight. These guys had sunlight and that gives them more vitamin D in their fat store than any other thing on earth except one thing, and that is cod liver oil. So I like putting this in my sausage. And of course, I'm gonna stick with the purple theme as best as I can with this sausage. I'm going with a pink Himalayan salt. That's gonna be our first primary. And of course, I'm just gonna put it on about like that. There are certain measurements that we could go by, but I won't. The purplest purple is sumac. I harvested this sumac last year. You may remember when I did this. It is highly known as an anti-inflammatory, as is poke right there, and as is turmeric. So you could say this is an anti-inflammatory sausage. Could be extremely good for people that have such problems as gout, arthritis, and any other kind of joint inflammation or muscle inflammation. Next we're gonna go, and that was sumac by the way, next we're gonna go with turmeric, not exactly purple, 
right, next we're going to go with paprika. It's a little more purple-ish. I'm going to put us a good dose of thyme on there. we got thyme on our hands. For our purple lineup, we have purple basil. Mary grew in her garden, and I think that now is the time to use it. Basil is really good in any kind of sausage, so I'm just going to disperse this purple basil throughout this grind, just like this. And last but not least, we're going to go in there with some black pepper to give it flavor. And it also works hand in hand with turmeric. If you're a big into turmeric, you need black pepper with your turmeric to make it assimilate or do whatever it does. Helps it work better in your system. Let's start grinding. Thank you, Joe. All right, Matt cranked the generator. Caleb's got his purple shirt on just for this occasion. Let's go. Pop that back down there. That'll help it get assimilated in there. Here goes some frozen meat. Plunge up down there. There you go. We're going to put some onion, some fat, some beef, some fat. potato starch. This stuff's really good in sausage to help it not be crumbly. And with that extra moisture I put in there, it may want to be crumbly. So I'm just going to throw this in there. And hey, the bag is purple. So we're good. Now to do the mixing, I'm just going to take this spoon and I'm just going to start working it. You can see how purple it is in there. I'm just going to work it through and through out this entire batch. And as long as this meat stays cold like this, we're not gonna ruin our fat definition. We're not gonna smear anything around. This is still very, very much frozen, cold, and crumbly, just like what you want. And I'm excited to see how this is gonna be. This stirring process is only gonna take probably about two minutes, two to three minutes because it's stirring so easy since it is frozen. It's just crumbly. It's just like, it's not greasy, sticky, or anything. It's just crumbly frozen. Look at that. <laughs> that, my friend, is purple sausage. At this point, I say, let's fire up the grill.
Smell good or smell burnt? Smell like, um, I don't know. <laughs> Let's cut this big one. Done. It's perfect. All right, I'm just gonna cut it in pieces and let everybody try the purple sausage. We've got a nice crispy charred edge on it. You three guys grab. You want that whole piece? Gonna have it with me? Yeah, sure. It cooked slow. I kept it on that top rack for probably an hour, and then I dropped it down at the very last on the heat, and let it finish up. I don't taste the pokeberry. Mm -hmm. There's no hot pepper in this, so it don't have a spiciness to it. I can um, I can kind of taste the beef. Do y'all taste that? This is not pork. This is beef. It tastes like a hamburger near it. Yeah. It actually tastes pretty good. It tastes a lot like a hamburger. I can't wait to throw some in a skillet and fry it in a skillet and see how that tastes. The grill tastes pretty good though. Matt, I hadn't heard a word out of you yet, son. Kind of, whenever I smelt it, it kind of smelt like duck. Duck? After you roasted it. Yeah. Tasted like beef, though. Yeah. Almost tastes like a meatloaf, don't it? Mm -hmm. You put some ketchup on that and a few, uh, few cooked uh, bell pepper around on it, you'd have a meatloaf. But anyway, that's all we've got for you today. I think whoever it was that said something about making a pokeberry sausage. I appreciate that. I like some good old helpful hints on what to make. Because let's face it, we only put out four long videos every week on YouTube and seven shorts. That's a whole lot of content to be coming up with constantly. Thankfully I've got all these boys here giving my brain a little spark every once in a while. But anyway, that's all we've got for you today. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video. You think it makes it taste more like burger since it's smoked or grilled? I don't know that I taste that much benefit from it being grilled.